back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys, so I'm here today to the 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 Hi guys! So I'm here today to review two science fiction books that I recently read. The first one is Spaceman of Bohemia which is by Yaroslav Kalfar and the second one is Abaddon's Gate which is by James S. A. Corey. This one is the third book in the Expanse series and this one is I think a standalone although I'm not certain. So this one I'll start off with. It's written by a Czech author which is really interesting to me and is a major reason why I picked this one up. Um, I actually was sent this for a view and it's got purple edges and a beautiful cover so all of that was very enticing to me. This is the story of a young man called Jacob. When we meet him we find out that he's had a good career, he has studied all sorts of different plants and matter and he has been selected by the Czech government, who are in this book quite a powerful government, to be the first man launched up into space and over to a giant dust cloud that is kind of permeating and undulating up in space and the earth wants to know more about what this dust cloud is so they send up one, just one, astronaut from the Czech Republic to go and find out and that astronaut is Jacob. So we follow Jacob's story, we follow him as he goes up into space but we also get flashbacks into his previous life down on earth. We find out that he's in a happy marriage with his wife who he's been married to for quite some years and he and his wife have always had a good relationship as far as he is concerned and now they are scheduling time together to talk whilst he is on this mission. The mission is going to take I think about eight months so he's going to be away from home for quite a long time. He's also kind of transformed in status from pretty much a nobody to the number one star celebrity on every news channel all over the world because he's the only person who is going up to this crazy space cloud to find out what is happening there. So there's a lot of pressure on him, there's a lot of pressure on their relationship, the two of them, and it kind of takes its toll. Jacob does not expect his journey into space to be the easiest thing he's ever done but he also doesn't necessarily expect his wife of many years to leave him and that is exactly what happens very early in this book. So we follow Jacob instead of on a happy journey to discover things as I kind of thought it might be, uh, it's not really a space opera as I kind of had hoped it would be, it's actually a lot more about Jacob's journey, Jacob's destiny, Jacob re-evaluating his life as he's this isolated person up in space on his own and kind of trying to unpack a lot of the past and a lot of his future and a lot of what has happened to him and what shaped him over his course of his life. So it's definitely a lot more thought-provoking than I initially thought it was going to be but not from a crazy sci-fi point of view, more from a human level. It talks a lot about loss, it talks a lot about torture, there are scenes of torture in this, and it talks a lot about loneliness and isolation, um, because he is isolated up in space on his own. And we also do get some science fiction elements, so we have elements of him exploring in space, we have elements of him going on this big adventure, we also have this kind of alien creature thing that's kind of a cross between a monkey and a spider and Yoda, or at least I imagine it as being kind of a Yoda thing because it kind of floats around and says big metaphorical things. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a weird alien and we're following him as he encounters this alien, talks to this alien and kind of tells this alien a lot about himself and lets this alien see a lot about himself and he's also travelling on this mission. That is kind of the general concept of this book, which is quite different to what I initially imagined it being. I think maybe my expectations were misplaced when it comes to this book because I was thinking it was going to be this big romp around space with him discovering these crazy things about this cloud and it really wasn't that at all, it was much more personal, much more individual. So I think if you like kind of character development stories, you're gonna probably like this more than if you like space opera stories. But with that said, even though it is a lot more focused on character development, I wouldn't say that Jacob as a character is someone that I really enjoyed reading about. 
he's had a pretty tortured life. Um, he grew up as the child of someone who was pretty horrible and did pretty horrific things. He ended up living with his grandparents because of various reasons and nasty things happened to him whilst he was there too. Um, it's, it's definitely got a lot of references to sex and a lot of references to violence that I kind of think were a little bit unnecessary. Um, there was a lot of repetition of the same sort of thing coming up as themes and it didn't feel like each instance was different, it felt like it was all kind of a bit samey at times and I didn't really feel like as one spaceman sent into space on your own you would be thinking as much about some of the things he was thinking about, if that makes sense. I, I don't want to give too much away but basically it didn't convince me that he was really having thoughts I think he would have had if he was the only man in space on this mission. I'm also, I have to say, not convinced they would just send one man to space on his own. Like, this is a massive plot hole to me. Why would they do that? I don't see it. I don't see it happening. So it seems pretty odd to me that he's the only one being sent on this mission. There's also some plot holes in the second half about how he gets back, um, or if he gets back. I don't really feel convinced about the second half of this book at all. I think it's pretty rubbish. Um, the first half I definitely found more interesting, more insightful, more focused. The second half felt a little bit mismatched. Um, so yeah, I didn't love the second half of this. I actually ended up giving this just a two stars. It was an okay read, it had some good moments to it, but I felt like it was let down by the plot. And I felt like even though it was an interesting exploration of thoughts and mind, it didn't really convince me that this character was real and these were real thoughts and desires and passions and ideas that this character would have. So those are my thoughts on this one. Not quite as exciting as I had hoped it would be, um, but maybe if you went into it with the right expectations you would have a different feel because I don't think the blurb of this book really pitches it at all how it actually is. Let me know if you're going to pick this one up in the comments below. The other book that I have to review for you is Abaddon's Gate by James S. A. Corey. This is the third book in the Expanse series and I read this with James whose channel is James Chatham. I'll link it below. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I've heard quite a few people saying that the third book is not as good as some of the others. I think the first and the third are so far my favourites but I think the third one might be out the first because by this point in the series you know these characters quite well and you kind of really enjoy hearing more about their stories. So in this book we are once again following Holden and his crew, we're following them on the Rosinanti and they are on a mission to escape Mars because Mars want to reclaim the Rosinanti ship from them and so they have to take a camera crew with them, they're the only people who will hire them, on a mission to the Ring. The Ring is a very big kind of crazy alien thing that has popped up because of various past events, I won't go into them. But because of this, um, no one really knows quite what it is, no one really understands it, and so he and his crew are taking this TV crew near to the ring to find out a bit more about it, and things go pretty wrong when an assassin character called Melba gets involved in their story, she attempts to sabotage them, and she does quite successfully on this, um, and she basically sets them up to take the fall for a pretty major catastrophe. So we have lots of different characters in this series that we follow. We follow quite a few different viewpoints. We follow Melba's viewpoint and that's a new one which I really enjoyed seeing because she is a very flawed, very twisted, very dark character. She has a lot of inner demons, she has a lot of motivation for why she does what she does but she goes about things in quite a dark, twisted way and it makes her a very interesting character to read about. We also have Holden and his crew who I really enjoy reading about. They're kind of like the main protagonists we've seen in all three of the books. So I like their crew and I like sort of seeing them. We also have a young woman who is a pastor and she is called Anna. She is travelling on a big giant ship to try and find out about the ring and possibly preach and find out about God's reasoning behind the ring and how God factors in and different religions and she is on board with a whole load of other people from different religions across the galaxy to kind of all put their thoughts in. They've got theologists, um, all sorts of people. So we're following her. We're also following Bull who is a kind of security guard type character. He's also on the behemoth ship and he is in charge of security there. 
he knows some of the people that we know from previous books and he's been placed there because he is reckoned to be quite a good um, navigator of political intrigue as well as security generally. And those are our kind of main characters. Um, in this world, or in this galaxy I suppose, we have different uh, types of people. So we have people who are from Earth, we have people who are from different planets, and we have people who are from the belt. We basically have a very tenuous relationship between a lot of these people. Um, some of these people really hate each other just on the fact that they come from different places in the galaxy, and a lot of these people don't get on politically. Um, so we have a lot of ships in play, we have a lot of different characters in play, and we have a really interesting alien artefact at the centre of this whole book that we're trying to find out more about. I really really enjoyed the fact that in this book we're following a lot more female characters and we're seeing them be completely different individual types of people. So often in a book that is written by a man, or in this case two men, under a pseudonym, um, you don't necessarily see characters who are three-dimensional, you see a lot of like two-dimensional side characters and then like a three-dimensional main character. But because this is multiple POV and we're following lots of people, we have to see lots of three-dimensional characters and I do think you get that and you get very realistic, very gritty characters in this book, both male and female. We're following Holden who's quite a gritty character because he's been through a lot already and again Bull is another character who's been through a lot and so the two of them definitely have a kind of steadfast, very honest, very raw, very protective character dynamic to them and they both care a lot about the people who they work closely with. We then also have Melba who as I say is this very twisted, very flawed character but she has her reasons. She's not just a bad character for the sake of it, she definitely has motivation to despise this crew. Um, and then we have Anna who is a very pure character, she has a lot of belief in God, a belief in um, spiritual divinity, a belief in reasons behind doing things and she's quite a pure character. We also have Naomi who is part of Holden's crew, she's not a viewpoint character but she is someone who plays in a lot because she is the love interest and she has a very very strong sense of herself, um, she knows a lot about who she is as a person, she knows a lot about the people around her and how to please and help and care for those people and I really enjoy her as a character for those reasons. We also have um, other characters who kind of come into it a bit like the wife of Anna and her daughter, we also have Sam who is an engineer on the behemoth ship and these characters come in as side characters but I still feel like they're pretty fleshed out for side characters. We also have the captain of the ship and Pi who are other characters who kind of get into the story in different ways and we have Miller who is a character that only Holden can see, he's kind of like a ghost-ish character. There are reasons why he is only seen by one person um, but you get them explained in this book so I won't go into them. But basically this is a very very expansive space opera with a lot of action, particularly in the second half. I do feel like the Expanse books often start off quite slow and then they build and they build and they build and by the second half you are just devouring it and that's exactly what happened with this book for me. It was quite a slow start, I wasn't really into it for about the first hundred pages and then the more I got into it, the more I was interested, the more exciting it became and it was very dramatic and very exciting in the middle section and particularly the end section as well. I'm super intrigued about where the next book is going to go and I'm hopeful that I'll like it just as much but this one was actually super surprising for me because I had heard negative things but I don't agree with them, I think it was really really fun, really great and I definitely enjoyed this a lot and it kind of reignited my love for this series because it's been a long time between reading the second one, I think a few years ago, and reading this one. So I really need to get back to the rest of the books in this series and I'm very very happy that I have got to this one. I'd love to hear your thoughts below if you've read the Expanse series, what did you think of this one in particular and which one is your favourite in the series so far. Thank you all so much for watching, leave me your thoughts on Abaddon's Gate and Spaceman of Bohemia down below. I will see you very soon in another video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today Go pick up a book Then come back and chat with me again